Hey beautiful people, welcome to another tutorial today. So we are going to be making this dress. If that's what you want to see, then sit tight. So you'll be needing your full body's block, the upper bodies, your bust point, half length, and every other thing put in please, your that, and also your sleeve. I'm going to have to label front, back, upper and arm, up onto your elbow or one inch above the elbow yeah sleeve length one inch above the elbow so i'm gonna have to impute my um sleeve center sleeve to match my shoulder line okay and i'll use a tape to tape this down i'm gonna have to use a tape to tape this down like so i have quite a number of tutorials where i've done stuff like this and so, if you've been following my channel, this shouldn't be confusing to you, right? I just had to make that cap, the very cap part of that sleeve, the very upper part of the sleeve visible. Because that is where we are going to be making as our neckline. This very particular off shoulder isn't really, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's not really a deep off shoulder or something. It just started from the very tip of the sleeve just like we are doing now so that is where our neckline is going to start and i'm taking this line all the way down because i don't want to reveal much cleavage i don't want to reveal any cleavage at all not even much i have to increase my where it's going to overlap the overlap i have to increase the overlap just so i don't reveal any cleavage and that's what i'm trying to check out now just to make sure that there is no cleavage that i'm going to be exposing when i put on this dress okay so I have to measure 5.5 inches as where I want the overlap to be, 5.5 inch. And I'm going to be drawing a guideline just to put me through when I'm ruling out the overlap line. And I'm going to head again to mark out this line to make sure it's at the 5.5 line. But putting it at the 5.5 line, it looks as if it's going to be very... Like it's going to be on top and choking at the neck area. So I have to use this very particular line, which I feel, yes, is at least is above my bust point and it's not going to be showing my cleavage. Yeah. It's above my bust point and it's not going to be showing my cleavage. So I had to use, and I marked it, that I think it's actually 1.5 inch or 2 inches above my bust point. It's not going to be showing any cleavage, and that's okay. So I have to asterisk that place as where my overlap will be. Like kind of, yeah, the crossing, the overlap crossing, where it's going to be. So I have to extend that line down to my waistline. Yeah, like so, as you can see. So having done that now, from the center of the sleeve, from the center of our sleeve, we're going to be ruling a line from that center sleeve to join our waistline and i'll be using an additional paper to fill up that very particular space before i draw the line to meet the waistline of our upper bodies from the center of the sleeve to meet the waistline of our upper bodies like so so i haven't added the extra paper i'm going to be taping it down so yes after taping it down I'll go ahead with my ruler and from the center sleeve, you want to draw that line to join your upper body's waistline like so. And this hole is what we are going to be using as our front bodies. Okay. So I'll go ahead now to cut this out. Just exactly as the shape of what I've drawn out, that is also what I'm going to be cutting out, okay? I also go ahead to separate the back sleeve from the front sleeve, just so I put it aside and use it for the back bodies. And yes, this is the back sleeve. I'll be setting it aside, okay, for the back bodies. And so this is what we have for the front bodies. And we're going to be manipulating this now to get that very folded effect like pleats. 
So I'm using the other part of the front bodice and I'll be taping it down temporarily just so I get the contour lines that are necessary to give this dress a better fit. Okay, I have to tape it down temporarily just so I get the contour lines and I'm going ahead to contour my neckline, the contour guideline that is at the neck. I'll go ahead to mark it now. If you don't know what I mean by contour neckline, if you've not been watching my channel, then you should check out any of my videos, I think, or I'll be leaving a description, a, a link to a video that has a detailed contour guideline in my channel in the comment section, okay? And please consider subscribing to this channel. I actually used 0.25 inches and I'm joining it like so. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, subscribe to this channel because I'm bringing lots of unlimited styles using patterns in this channel like you don't want to miss that okay so having done that now i'm marking out where all the dots are and we actually have four dots here yeah so we're going to be manipulating this body to create that very lovely effect and i'm going to trace this now in a fresh paper just so i don't want these patches white patches so it's more explainable to you and for the side bust that, I'm going to be extending it like so. Because if I don't extend it, it's going to be difficult to slash and spread it. So you have to extend it to meet an outward part. Okay. So I'll go ahead now to draw in my guidelines that I'll be using for the slash and spread. Just the guidelines. Just so when I'm cutting, I know where I'm cutting. You know, it's easier for me using guidelines when I'm slashing and spreading. Okay. It's easier using, and I advise you to use guidelines. So just draw a guideline. It's not necessarily you'll be, you'll be cutting according to the guideline, but just draw the guideline. It's going to help you. So now we are closing up that. So I'm going to start from this one. I'll go ahead to close up this very particular dot. Like so. I'm going to be closing it up. And do not worry about that edge that is left. We're going to also cover that up when we are cutting on the fabric. We're going to kind of is it through it uh, sorry it's not true what do they even call it um we're going to blend it here blend it we're going to blend it so i also go ahead to open up this dot right so also i had to open this one and close it i'm going to close this dot now and open it at my waist dot like so so i'll go ahead to tape this down now. Also, I'll go ahead to open the side bust that and close it. I'm going to be closing the side bust that and opening it at the waistline rather. At the waist that. Like so. Now go ahead with my tape to hold this in place to close it. Yeah. Also, I'll go ahead to close my waist that now. So my tape, I'm trying to close, but it looks like it's going to be very... So I had to flip it over and close it through the back just so it's easier for me to work with. So I had to flip it over and close it through the back just so it's easier for me to work with. You can also tape through the front. Uh, just this like this paper is very rigid this, this is not a pattern paper so it's rigid and it tears easily so i had to go through the easier way just so you can tear you can go through the front it's not like this is a method or a routine or is it no it's not you can close it through the front so whatever it's easy for you make sure you close the that that's just what we want to do So I haven't closed that. This is what you're going to be having. We're going to be slashing and spreading our patterns. Our pattern to our guideline. Now remember you slash to and not to. And you're slashing to from where you want fullness to be added. Because we want fullness to be added at the waist line. That is why we are cutting those places open. Like so. I will link a video of... I will link a video that has the same kind of tutorial in the description. Sorry, not description, but in the comments hmm, section. 
just so you check it out, it's also going to help you and widen your knowledge concerning this very particular method of slash and spread design. Thank you. So I had to cut this place again because I want that very center to lay flat. I think that's actually the point of all the dots. So it's kind of puffy. So I need to lay flat because we are working with a flat pattern. That's why I had to cut it. And immediately I, had, immediately I cut it open. On its own, the dots just, you know, as you can see, it just opened because that is the very pivotal point of the dot. Yeah. So it just opened on its own. I'm going to have to slash and spread this on the fresh pattern paper and i'll be closing it up like so like i said you want to check out that video to get more knowledge and more understanding concerning this very particular type of slash and spread and if you haven't subscribed to this channel consider subscribing to this channel for unlimited styles using patterns so i'm going ahead to close it what i'm doing is making sure that the brown paper is inside and then the white paper is on top okay just so it looks like I didn't do anything at all. I don't know if you get me. I'm free, I'm trying to tuck in the brown paper and I'm making sure that the white is on top just so it looks like the way it was before we slashed and spreaded it. Yeah, that's just what we are doing. And that's what you can see me doing like so. I'm tucking in the brown paper and letting the white paper be on top just so it's like the way it was before we slashed and spreaded it. So yeah, that's what I'm doing now, as you can see. And that's also what you're going to be doing on the fabric. We'll, we'll get to that as the video goes on. Pattern drafting is very easy and you can use it to create unlimited styles. I'm here to help you understand the basics. Just so you, whatever style you want to create, you can be creative and do a lot of creative things using patterns, okay? Just understand the basics and that is why I'm putting these videos out to help you understand the basics. Leave a question for me in the comment section. I want to hear all of it and help you through, okay? Thank you for sticking with me and for watching this video. I really do appreciate you and I'm glad you got value. So I'll go ahead now to cut off the excesses. That's the parts we don't need. It's necessary you tape down. It's necessary you bring back this pattern like the way we did before cutting. Do not just add fullness and you cut. Do everything you've seen me do before you remove the excess fabrics. And this is what it's going to look like. So heading over to the back pattern. Same like what we did to the front. I'm going to be taping the sleeve to the shoulder tip down like so. And also using an additional paper, I'm going to be filling up this gap just so I'm able to connect the center sleeve to the waistline of the back pattern. Same thing with the to the front. But here we are not slashing and spreading nothing. We are, we, are starting and we, are we are slashing sorry, and spreading nothing at the back. And I'm trying to use the front, the original front pattern, to true it just to make sure that the sleeve lengths are the same. The center sleeve lengths are same. Yeah. This is mainly for the center sleeve front. Because there's no way the side could, the sides will always align and there's no way the sides are definitely going to be exactly the same because your back is bigger than your front, your back, sorry, your front is bigger than your back. But just make sure that the lengths of the sleeve are same, are same, yeah, make sure that the length of your sleeve are same. So I haven't chosen it and they are in line, I'm going ahead now to cut. Also, we are going to be removing the darts 
of the back bodies. And so heading on to the neckline for the back bodies, same like how we got the neckline for the front bodies from that very tip of your sleeve. That's where you're going to be starting. And I had to mark four inches downwards and using my ruler, I'm going to connect that like a V also to meet the four inches like so. So having done that now, I'll be taking this out. So this is what the back pattern looks like. So I'm going to have to cut everything on fabric and we'll head over to the sewing. So heading over to the sewing now, if you've been watching my videos, you know that I love to interface my fabric. I'm going to have to interface the fabric and I've also marked out where I'm supposed to be tucking in and where I'm supposed to be leaving out. Okay. And I'll go ahead to work on it from those lines that I marked. Like so. You want to use a needle and thread to do this first before you sew on the sewing machine just so it's easier for you but i'm just this needle i'm using is so tiny but i am not getting up from my seat because ha, ah, i can't get up from this seat it actually broke in fact the needle broke as i was using it the needle actually broke so i'm gonna have to sew one side and i'm also going to do same thing to the other side I'm trying to make sure that I'm tucking it in the right way. You want to do this the right way. And this, my fragile needle, is giving me a whole lot of headache. But once I'm on this, my seat to sew, there's nothing that is happening in the world that can make me get up, except for a few things, you know. You, you, you can relate. If you sew, you can relate. You know, when we sit on that chair, we don't always want to stand up. So I'm just managing the needle. It's very fragile, but I'm just, this is actually a needle I use for my beading work. So now I've gone ahead to do that on both sides and I've used the facing to cover up the necklines for the front. And that is what it looks like. I'm using my original pattern to check. So I'm going ahead now to join these two together. I'm trying to tuck in the facing, right? Just so it is not there as a fabric. It's supposed to be inside. I'm trying to tuck it in. And yes, my sewing machine is misbehaving. A lot of things are just misbehaving today, but I was bent on making this video. My sewing machine is really misbehaving so much. I don't know why. I don't know if it's from the fabric, but I'm just bent on doing this video. I've already started and I can't give up. So yeah, this is what I have now. So I'll head over to the skirt. I'll go ahead to sew the darts for the lower bodies, rather. Skirt, lower bodies. <laughs> so I'll go ahead to sew the darts for the lower bodies. Tell me what you think about this combination. I think it's actually very cool. I'm loving it.
So having done that now, I'll go ahead to use that very upper one to through it and um, to make sure that my waist lines are together. So having done that, I'll go ahead over to the back piece and I'll stitch the dart of the back piece of the upper bodies. So same thing also I'll be doing to the other side and heading over to the joining of the front and the back you want to sew from the see center sleeves you want to join the center sleeves together but before that I want to sew the facing of the back neckline so I'm going to be sewing the facing of the back neckline like so I think this design is actually supposed to be worn with a camisole because if you don't use a camisole, when you lift your arm, um, some of your skin is going to, your skin is definitely going to show. If you don't use a camisole, when you lift your arm, your skin is going to show. So I advise you use the color of the camisole, same color of your upper bodies, wear the same color of the camisole of your upper bodies, then for, what am I even saying? You have to get a same color a same you have to get the same color of your upper bodies in a camisole for this dress okay <laughs> if that makes sense hmm. so i'm gonna have to stitch together the center sleeves of the front and the back and yeah i've done same to both sides and this is what the back looks like This is what the front looks like. And I'm going to put the lower bodies. I'm joining the lower bodies together now. To wait. Oh, my sewing machine is really, really giving me a whole lot of stress today. Hmm. But it was just for this video because when I started making other dresses, it wasn't giving me this kind of headache. I think it's from the fabric or whatever. I don't know. So we're heading over to this very particular part. I'm only, I'm just trying to match these two to meet where the front and the back waistline joins like so. Then I'll sew down. It's actually a trick I use. Hmm? But hey, measure it, measure, 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 measure your waistline and join first before. Don't do like this. So yeah, we're done and this is what this very goodness looks like. Trying to fold everything foldable inside. Everything that needs to be inside has to be inside. So the ones outside will be outside and nothing will disturb them. Mm -hmm. So this is what it looks like. Subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up. And I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.